Hey there, it's Erica, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make my whole wheat sourdough sandwich bread. This loaf is soft and light, perfect for sandwiches or toasting. Okay, let's make it. Here's everything that you'll need. One cup or 220 grams of active sourdough starter. An active starter is one that has been fed about four to 12 hours previously, has doubled in volume, is active and bubbly, and passes the float test. You'll also need 400 grams of whole wheat flour. I like to grind my flour right before making my bread because whole wheat flour tends to deteriorate pretty quickly after it's ground. If you purchase your whole wheat flour pre-ground, then just make sure to put it in the freezer or the refrigerator when you get home. Also for this recipe, I make sure to use a hard wheat variety since it's higher in gluten than a soft wheat. You need that extra gluten content to make a nice stretchy dough, which will help the bread to rise higher. You'll also need two tablespoons or 45 grams of raw honey, one and a half teaspoons or eight grams of unrefined sea salt, one cup or 230 grams of water, and two tablespoons or 26 grams of avocado oil. You could substitute olive oil, coconut oil, or even melted butter if you prefer. Place all of the dough ingredients into the bowl of a stand mixer. Knead on medium-low for 15 to 25 minutes. You want the dough to be nice and elastic. Window pane would be ideal, but with whole wheat flour, it's sufficient if you can tell that it's nice and stretchy and doesn't immediately break apart. Allow the dough to rise at room temperature until doubled, about six to eight hours. Rise time will vary depending on how warm your house is. Now you can also let the dough rise for two to four hours at room temperature and then place it in the refrigerator for 12 hours. This will help you to control the rise a little more. The reason I do the cold rise is the whole wheat flour makes the sourdough starter more active than white flour, so this helps to slow down the fermentation a bit. If you have a warm house and you do all of the fermentation at room temperature, temperature, you might be able to get this loaf done in one day. I personally find that a complete room temperature rise yields the best results. Butter a 9 by 5 inch loaf pan. I like to use glass, but you can use whatever you have on hand. Now form the chilled dough into two loaves. I like to form my loaf by squishing out the dough into a rectangle, quickly rolling it up, and then turning it the other way and rolling it up again, making sure to press down on the seams and pinch the ends together. This makes a nice tall loaf. Place the loaf in the greased loaf pan. Cover and allow to rise at room temperature until it rises over the top of the pan. This can take anywhere from two to eight hours depending on how warm your kitchen is and how active your sourdough starter was. When the loaf is almost done rising, preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 degrees Celsius. Bake the risen loaf for 10 minutes, then lower the temperature to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 177 degrees Celsius. Bake for an additional 30 to 40 minutes or until the loaf registers 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 93 degrees Celsius in the middle and sounds hollow when tapped on the bottom. Remove from the oven and turn the loaf out onto a wire cooling rack. Now try your very best to not cut into this loaf until it has cooled for at least an hour. It will be difficult, I know. Now this loaf was a little overproofed since I was in a rush to get it done for the video, so I let it rise in my warming drawer. So I baked another loaf for you so you can see the full glory of this sourdough sandwich bread. Of course, it's great for sandwiches, but there's nothing quite like a buttery piece of toast with some strawberry jam. I love a good sourdough boule, but it's just nice to not have the butter drip right out the bottom of your toast sometimes. I also experimented with using a whole wheat starter so that the loaf was almost 100% whole wheat. The loaf still turned out pretty well, but you can definitely tell that the loaf risen with the white flour starter had a more open, light crumb. All right, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to check out this video next to get my sourdough brioche recipe. It's kind of like a cross between a cake or a pastry and a bread, and it's heavenly.